Okay, let's get started. So the first thing that I've got here is my quilting back cover. And I've put that down with a piece of embroiderer's felt. And you can see I'm only just covering the needle area here. But that's okay because we made that a little large. <clears throat> and all we're going to do is hold that down and then stitch our beautiful quilting design. Now the quilting design on this one is really there to look um, subtle. So the one that I've chosen to do today is a little bit of a, almost a fleur de -lis sort of a thing. And there are more steps to this than the regular notebook cover because we are putting in the entire um, zippered pouch. But this is just such a beautiful finished project that I know you're going to use it for years and years to come. <clears throat> And for instance, my darling husband is um, is getting one with some Doctor Who fabric that I found the other day. So the quilting's just going to go over, and you really do need the embroiderer's felt behind this because it adds the stability to that zippered pouch section. Without the embroiderer is felt behind it, what you're going to be left with is just um, extra, uh, just a really floppy bag. So it is worth putting that in. Now the fabrics that I've used here um, were ones that I just fell in love with and they are from a Tula Pink range, but realistically, it's totally up to you, whatever fabrics you want. So we're gonna come through, and we're about halfway through our stitching now, and <clears throat> I've matched the quilted panel up with the quilted, um, with the cover designs so that everything is seamless. So you can come through and know that so long as you choose quilted panel one and cover one, <coughs> those designs are going to match up. I'm quilting with a rayon embroidery thread and <clears throat> it was a really interesting one with this project. I actually chose a pale pink and it worked beautifully for merging into the fabric and it allows the fabric to shine as opposed to the embroidery to, to shine. And neither one is wrong, it really is just what you personally like the best. Okay, so we're nearly finished our embroidery here. And then we're going to come over and remove that from the hoop. Now, we need to set our zipper up. If you haven't seen our zipper loader, it is for sale and you can find that on our website and it's really just giving you an extra pair of hands. It works on any size zipper and the only trick is to load it in um, so that the fat end is at the top. You cut off on the diagonal the ends of your zipper and then we just squeeze those ends in till it falls out of course and yep I can see we've got this one now <clears throat> once you've got those first couple of stitches you are right to go 
So now we can come over, hoop another piece of stabiliser and come back to our machine. First colourway is going to stitch out the dimensions of the, um, the zipper pouch itself and where that zipper is going to sit. And again I've got that pale pink thread on my machine. So we come through <clears throat> and once we've done that outline it's of the entire pouch it's then going to outline where the zipper goes. Now pay attention to which way you put your zipper in. It's really easy to lay the zipper in what I would consider the wrong direction. I want my zipper when it's closed to be at the top of the notebook. <clears throat> Therefore, I am going to place the zipper closed with the tab at the top of the design here. So, grab your zipper and I pop the um, tab out of the stitching area. So I've cut it a little bit larger and I'm just going to lay the zipper over that outline and then we're going to stitch colorway 2 which is going to hold down that zipper on the <clears throat> on the top and then colorway 3 to hold it down on the bottom, uh, to hold down the bottom of the of the zip, and then we're going to come along with our vinyl, and colourway four is going to be so just lay the vinyl over the bottom of that zipper, and colourway four is going to attach the vinyl to the zipper. Don't worry about the fact that you've got stabilizer in there. All of that will come out. It's not an issue. And now there's only one more colorway to make up the pouch. <clears throat> because it's got an open bottom and there's no lining on the front, it's incredibly easy to do this project. So we're going to take our lining, um, zipper pouch lining fabric and lay it on the inside of the hoop. Now I'm doing a little bit of a cheating thing here and I'm just scooting that fabric underneath. And you'll see what I mean here. You just want to make sure it's covered the entire area of our bag or our pouch and that it is right side up. <clears throat> now we're then going to take that quilted panel. Now move your zipper into the middle of the setting. Do not stuff this up otherwise your zipper will be on the outside and useless. Then lay the quilted panel face down and stitch the final colourway to hold that in place. And you can see here I'm doing a triple stitch which makes it a rather strong <coughs> project. If I'm going to put my phone into something I want it to actually not fall out and therefore break my phone. <coughs> now you could get quite creative on this. You could come through 
and um, before you did that added that back panel you could put in um, like stitch credit card slips and you could use this as a way to hold your um, your cards as you go through um, through your day I've used a nylon zip which is why I can stitch over it please do not use metal zips and think they are going to have the same result you will stuff up at the very least your needle okay so we're not closing the bottom because we don't need to um, one of the reasons that this is such a cool project to do um, is just how quick each individual part really is okay so we've now finished stitching let's come over to the table and unhoop <coughs> So the first thing that we need to do is remove our stabilizer. Now you will have some of those stitches from showing where the placement lines were. Just come through and nip those at the seam line with your scissors. Take off as much stabilizer as you can we will of course be getting any from the inside when we turn the bag right side out and just rip off as much as possible and then we are going to come through and trim that bag up so I'm just going to cut across the bottom and I've got a little bit of wiggle room there across the bottom. I've probably got about oh, three quarters of an inch, nearly two centimeters. Come through, trim to around a quarter of an inch, six millimeters. Because we don't want massive amounts of bulk in our projects. And once we've done that, get rid of our scraps. Ugh, don't you hate that when you miss one bit? And then we're going to turn it right sides out. Now, I am doing that the wrong way at the moment, so let me change it back. I need my vinyl on the same side as the purple fabric there. <coughs> It's fine if you stuff it up, you'll get it right next time. And don't worry that it's looking a little rough, but I do want to come through and pull those, um, pull all the stabilizer out from the zipper area. And then just pull our corners out as much as we can okay so now we've got our zippered pouch don't worry that it is open at the bottom because that's what we are going to put into the notebook and I'll close my zipper here I'm just fiddling getting the last of those little bits of stabilizer through And now we can come through. I need to hoop up another piece of stabilizer. And we're going to start on the notebook cover itself. <coughs> so what I've got here is my stabilizer in the hoop. I'm going to stitch the first color, which will be the outline showing where um, all of the fabric will go and you'll notice that it does that little kick up there that actually shows you where you are going to place your 
um, lining at the end. So take your fabric and again I'm using this pink and orange fabric. Lay it over that outline and then we are going to stitch colorway 2 lay it over that outline and stitch colorway 2 to hold that down and Again, you've got that tiny little kick coming up so that you can always see and that allows you to get a really beautiful lining on the um, on the book cover as well. Okay. Now, oh heavens, you can see there I'm trying to take a photo of that at the same time. Now, colorway three is going to do all of our decorative quilting stitching. So this is the same quilting that we did in the on the back of the quilted panel so that they match. While this is quilting it's a great time to come through and press with a coolish iron and not on the vinyl itself that zippered pouch just so that it is looking as good as it gets. <clears throat> and we want to come through. And the stitching on it's just lovely and one of those reasons I really think is because um, I've used a curvy stitching design for the quilting whilst I'm using a geometric print so they, they it's kind of a juxtaposition but it goes quite well together. Now depending on which quilting design you choose they are they will all take different amounts of time um, but I'm loving the designs I think it's, it's so much fun to be able to do something <clears throat> that is on the same path and yet different again okay so we come through and then we want to fold over and press the um, the lining piece which is what's going to hold the book into the cover so first thing we're going to do is take that lining piece and the zippered pouch. Now the zippered pouch is going to sit just inside of this stitching design. So it'll hold itself and you'll be able to stitch and so long as you lay it out correctly you won't stitch the zippered pouch to the cover except for along that seam that you wish to. So pouch is going face up, lining is going face down and I'm just lining up making sure that I've got things where I want them to be and it's better to take a couple of minutes and do this correctly than to stuff it up and have to unpick. 
I am really not a fan of unpicking. <clears throat> so, lay the lining fabric where that um, little notch comes out. And all I'm doing here is giving my presser foot a chance to sit up over the thicker fabric. We come through and our zipper pouch is now attached to the cover. Now in the same as the original um, design that we've done with the notebook cover, this notebook cover is simply going to have um, or this side which is going to be the front side is quilted and then it will have the corner of the sorry then it will have the lining put on it so we come through and do our quilting And again, it's the same design, so we're keeping everything together. You can do it patchworky if you'd like to. There's nothing wrong with that. And you've got four different quilting designs. You've got four different spine designs. All available for you. <coughs> okay. Take lining piece and stitch it down and we're done okay now trim up those pieces hoop another piece of stabilizer and load up your spine of choice what I've done here is I have folded the um, zippered pouch into the lining so that it is out of the way I need um, I've stitched out colorway one which is showing where to lay down my fabrics and I'm going to come through and then and I am pausing the machine between <coughs> as I stitch down both sides of the notebook cover onto my stabilizer. Colorway 3 is going to show us exactly where to place your cork or decorative fabric and then I'm going to take that cork and colorway four is going to hold that down now I had a scrap of cork here and I'm being so stingy it just <coughs> just 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 was the right size so stitching colorway four to hold down that cork And the one that I've used is actually quite a narrow spine and I like that I'm just making sure that everything is covered up here nothing at all to worry about with <coughs> um, with testing to make sure you've got things right okay so stitch down that cork and then we're going to come and we're going to trim it away so take your favorite pair of scissors and 
and do a trim and you want to get quite close because what we're doing here and the design that I've chosen is the daisy <coughs> oh god that's bad cutting let's try again okay so I've chosen the daisy design now thread wise this is totally up to you let's come and have a look at I know I want to go purple but I'm not sure what purple I want to go and it's really interesting trying and seeing the different ways that different purples um, really do make a difference okay let's thread up and start stitching <coughs> Now, obviously, I have sped this up because otherwise it's a little bit of a boring stitch. So we come through. And I just think these little daisies are really cute. I think it's just a gorgeous little, um, and again, juxtaposition to the um, geometric style of the fabric we come through and we've got our little satiny daisies <coughs> so almost halfway through there whilst you're doing this it's a great time to get your last piece of fabric together your last piece of fabric remember is your um is your inner lining piece so we'll come through stitch the daisies down on the other side i really am liking how the um, purple is going with the pink it's it's just working for me So we're almost at the end here. And you can see that that um, zippered pouch <coughs> is still folded in at the moment. Because if I'd left it open, it would have um, touched on the embroidery as we were doing it. Okay, so let's fold that out because I don't want the extra bulk while I'm putting the last piece of lining on. And then stitch colorway six. One, two, three, four, five. Colorway six is going to show us exactly where that lining is going to go <clears throat> so come through and then finally colorway seven is going to be the colorway that finishes everything off so this is my lining fabric I'm going to lay it over I oh, know 
I lied, I didn't see myself do five there. Or six. Thought I had, but I was wrong. Now it is worth mentioning, keep your zipper pull out of the general area as this is pulling around. This is the one time that, <clears throat> or this is one of those times that that could stuff you up. Don't stress too much if it does, because you can just machine stitch this if it rips out of the hoop. Okay. And then take our lining piece, lay it on the top over that outline. And remember, this is all caught up, so we don't see the exposed edges because this is all caught in your um, in your notebook cover. Now the one thing that I have done along here is I've come through and I'm just going to fold over the tip of that pouch <coughs> so that I can get a really nice smooth edge there. Okay, and that is now all complete. Let's come back to the work table. So here we are back at my work table. I'm going to rip that out and you can see there my cork has just covered it. much more good luck than good management. I'm going to trim around and you want to be a good quarter inch. Don't go scant because if your stitching on your machine has been a little bit crappy, you're going to have really loose, icky bits. So go a full quarter inch all the way around. and turn your iron on at the same time just onto cool or medium and I always use cool or medium when I'm doing a um, when I'm working with corks or vinyls better to spend some more time but get it right okay get rid of our excess move over to an ironing mat and the first thing that we're going to do is fold that flap around okay and then <coughs> finger press and then with your warm iron, press that seam down. Turn out each of the sleeves and again finger press and press. Just make sure you're not putting the iron directly onto the vinyl. And we come to the second side. And we press again. So now that everything's all pressed, we can come and take our book 
and we're ready to insert the book into the cover. A5 notebook came out is um, generally the place that I get mine just because they do nice size notebooks and remember these are close fitting oh I'm loving how that's turning out and now let's come through and we are going to attach our magnetic clasps Now that our project's together, the last couple of things that I want to do is just the decorative attachments. And the first of those is going to be the um, magnetic clasps. Now, if you don't have or want to use magnetic clasps, that's fine. I just want my book to be able to maintain that closed state. So, I'm going to come through and... pull the magnetic clasps apart and you'll see I've got male and female and then I've got the washers as well so all I'm going to do is using the washer and a pen come through and make a mark and you'll see there, I'll just bring that up closer so you can see there those two marks that I've got and then using a pair of sharp scissors because you don't want to over punch this we only want to go in just enough And then I'm going to put the lighter which is the male in this case onto the vinyl cover it with the washer sorry I realize this is quite awkward for you guys to see cover it with the washer and then close that up there we go so number one on and now we'll come over to number two again make our markings pop that magnet in and then close up the gap wires here that I'm actually going to use to fold that over and that looks beautiful and I'm actually going to come through and just and that one's sitting a lot nicer now as well okay so we've got that side done now we want to put the same thing on to the other side and to do that what we need to do is come through 
and show exactly where those brackets should be. So what I'm going to do is just put the washer on there. exactly where that will be and you can see here that I'm folding it and it's got a little bit of extra room in it and that's so that I can pop my phone into it it's so that I can pop a pen into it without any trouble whatsoever and there are two markings so now I'll take my cover off and I can come through and I'm going to go through um, not through the um, all of the facings I'm only going to go through the actual um, quilted area and one hasn't quite cut through take that and just going to bring that side through there beautiful now we'll do the second side now your magnets can be whatever size you have in your stash I think for these the smaller the better but it's totally up to you and these are quite honestly what I had in my stash. And again, we've got that cover. And of course that then gets hidden by our lining. So let's come along and see how this all goes together. Cover on there. Cover on there. And then we can do up our final thing and you've got plenty of room for your phone so for instance I can easily fit my phone and a pen and take this into a meeting now the last thing that I'm going to do and it's not something that is mandatory but just one that I like to add is a little handmade tag and I'm thinking I'm going to add mine onto this purple area so I'm just going to take off one side no I'm not I'm going to take the entire thing out and again it is just all about deciding where to put it I'm proud of my handmade stuff and I want people to see 
that I've put effort into things. So I'm going to mark here my centre point on my cork and then I'm going to take that and I'm going to mark on that cork edge just those four prongs just to make it easy on ourselves and again you are only going to go through the cork layer not all of the lining layers feed your tag in and then you'll just see I've got my stabilizer there put my backing plate on and then fold down those prongs okay so for the final look what we are left with it's now I'm loving these Tula fabrics they are just the perfect way and the perfect smaller patterns um, for this type of project so what we end up with is a beautifully made notebook we've got our magnets there we've got a gorgeous handmade tag and you've got your <coughs> zipper pull that coordinates beautifully with your project i do hope you've loved this one as much as i have and i look forward to seeing you next time at julie hall designs <laughs>